Namathu Ratana Tayasa. May I pay homage to Triple Zem, the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. My respect goes to my parents and my teachers. Hello, good evening. Today is Monday the 4th, May 2020. This is Achan Sujan from Waraponya Meditation Centre in Aberdeen, Scotland. As usual, I am with you tonight again to be with you, to be friend at your home. Hi everyone. Hi Margaret, Sharla, Paula, Sanon and everyone. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> so we've been together so far one month it's uh, over one month we've been together uh, seeing plenty of people uh, I do not see you all but you have been seeing me and I hope that you are not fed up with me yet <laughs> and if you think you are fed up, you can tell me, yeah, tell me off. Achan, you're speaking too much. <laughs> okay, so uh, just let me know. Okay, so it's been a one month. Uh, I'm, I am with you all and uh, being friend and also sharing experiences and answering your questions. Yeah. And various types of the questions and the feedbacks that we've been uh, working on and sometimes it's related to personal things and other times it's related to the teachings and other times it's related to this pandemic so before going anywhere else again I would like to read out some of the feedbacks that I got and this is from Manish he writes that Vandana Banteju, uh, I live uh, I live in Aldershot, England, and uh, this I have heard about this place quite a long time, but I never never visited there yet. Oh, I think I visited once. Yeah. So I have been following your Dhamma talk and guided meditation as much as I can. It's really inspiring, sadhuvad. So sadhuvad means basically, uh, a sadhu means good and thank you. Uh, well, well done. So I'm trying to practice meditation and also trying to be mindful whatever I do, like eating, drinking, etc. Which is really, really good. And that's the beauty of the practice of a meditation. And, as, uh, and normally I also used to say that do not leave meditation on a cushion. Take the meditation with you. So wherever you are going, you're taking meditation with you. That simply means you're being mindful at all the time, whether whatever you're doing, in whichever situation. Okay. Hi David, hi Suresh, hi Karina, Rebecca. Uh, so... And further he writes, last Friday evening after I watched your Dhamma talk, I forgot which, which topic was that, uh, and practice meditation with you. Uh, and then afterward I watched on uh, watched the interview of Titnat Han with Oprah with uh, Wins Free, then one of the uh, Dalai Lama's talk in USA. Suddenly I felt weird like my head felt swollen my hand and whole body felt swollen so I said what happened to me and shaked my head and continued watching something started happening so I got a bit of a scared stopped watching the TV then went to bed Bante is it something do with meditation or not I'm a bit of concern thank you very much for your precious Dhamma talk and thank you for the the Warapanya Meditation Center. So, these are some of the experiences that when our mind became a calm, when our mind became a focused, 
in that moment, uh, different types of uh, experiences we will experience uh, depends on which state of the mind we are in at that moment. Sometimes we will experience of the lightness, other time the expansion of the entire body, and other times experience of a very tiny, our body, we become a very tiny and various sort of these states of the mind, uh, these experience will occur. And in those situations, what you normally do is to be mindful of that and rather than engaging or questioning about it, simply observing or perceiving it and come back to the breath or the primary object. And if not, then again, one more thing that you can do is to watch your own mind, what the mind which is watching uh, that object. Okay, so that you can do, but it's no, nothing to worry about it at all. And if you feel scared, then again, that moment, watch the scare. Not the object, but the scare, the feeling of scareness. So thank you very much for your reflection and the question. And also glad to hear the development of your meditation. Further uh, reflection from again, uh, this is more of a, like explaining uh, his experience uh, and the talking to his friends. And I believe that Colin would not mind if I am reading out his reflection. And the, normally he writes me early morning. That's a good morning, Achan Sujan. I enjoyed listening last night to you. And you, when you mentioned the word soldiers, I remember speaking to my friend a few days ago. He was complaining about not being able to go out and make money. I said to him, at least you're marching and you are not at war. What do you mean? He replied. Simply, I said, people are lying in bed in ICU, unable to work, uh, unable to walk and fighting for their life. I also said, remember, my friend, I have been there. I was in ICU last July. So appreciate life because you never know what is around the corner. He apologized. I said, you're I said, you're not the only one thinking like this. That's the way most people live their life. Just pause for a second and give it a thought. Keep smiling. This is a very, very good reflection and also a good advice for people who are feeling down and feeling puzzled. When we see others suffering, then we realize that how fortunate we are. This morning I was watching a breakfast news and I also real, uh, uh, there was a story of a lady, her uh, palpitation or the heartbeat was so low that low than 20. Uh, and then there was very little chance of uh, yeah, survival and yet she was able to survive and she realized that there are so many other people are also facing with it and that's how she was able to cope with it. And this is the, exactly what the Buddha's teachings are or teachings is that when we are suffering we normally go into the diving into the same story circle again and again again and again but once if you are coming out and looking at the other people and their suffering, then what happens is your suffering will decrease. That's why I normally use a simile that if we want to be clean, we have to take a bath or shower with a clean water. But if we are taking a bath with a dirty water thinking that we will be cleaning ourselves, then it won't. So first we have to realize that we are in that dirty water. And once we realize that dirty water, we are in the dirty water and come out from that dirty water and then have a bath with the fresh water. And with that, we will be able to clean ourselves. 
So that's why it's very important to realize the suffering that we have and also looking at others suffering and then that's how we can see that how much we are lucky how lucky we are we become and this life becomes such a wonderful time that we have compared to as the colin said so many million almost a million people are affected by this covid 19 and we are so fortunate that we are not affected by it and not only affected by it we have all the facilities and we are the, the physically we are fit we have food to eat we have a house we have roof uh, over our head we have electricity telephone internet everything is perfect so when we look at this way it energizes us and realize that how precious this life that we have at this time okay so do not only think that you have got this problem always think outside the box and you see that how fortunate we are so thank you very much for this reflection from colin so in the meanwhile, I also got uh, uh, two reflections from Switzerland, but this is written in Thai language, uh, saying uh, that uh, they enjoy listening, uh, chanting, and also the talk. And particularly, uh, chanting is helping her and her child to go to sleep. And this chanting is really helping for them to calm their emotion and unstable state of living together so long uh, the emotion become ups and downs and when they are listening the chanting helping them to feel calmer and easy to go sleep yeah. so i also would like to tell you all that if you are finding difficult turn on the chanting and do the chanting or listen a chanting it will definitely help you to grow uh, to to get a uh, relax and get sleep okay. so these are some of the uh, feedbacks and the reflections and tonight I also would like to speak on the on the human nature that we are very good at adopting and adapting to the situation different situation and in terms of the Buddhism again Buddhism is so flexible and it has got the elast elasticity nature of elasticity that able to stay and survive in every culture and able to adapt in every situation every societies and that's why we have a different types of a buddhism so let's say if i say buddhism in thailand and thai buddhism will be completely two different topics which is similar to saying buddhism in sri lanka and sri lankan buddhism would be very different it's a different topic and when i say sri lankan buddhism then the buddhism which has adapted and adopted the the pre-existing cultures traditions way of life into buddhist way of life and same with the tibetan uh, that's why uh, Tibetan Buddhism again it's combination of uh, the previously existing uh, religion called Bon Bon religion yeah? so that's again similar to every other countries uh, Buddhism is so adapting into every culture without ha creating any uh, crisis uh, any difference or uh, or any uh, differentiations between one or another it's simply able to adapt into that uh, any culture that is introduced and when you look at our human nature we are also like that too we also able to adapt in every culture and every situation wherever we are suppose we are traveling from one society or we are migrating from one society to another society 
at first there will be a, a cultural shocks and then there will be a, a different uh, etiquettes and uh, rules and uh, rites and rituals will be there and it takes quite some time to adapt and as you as days pass by and gradually you will adapt there's uh, the way of life the culture and the rites and rituals even the way of speaking and even the way of eating so gradually we adapt into that situation uh, and blending into that so tuning in and become a one in that culture by leaving our pre-existing culture although the pre-existing culture will still be affecting in some forms but as a human nature or we are very good at the adapting otherwise if we do not have that the nature of adapting or adopting the different uh, cultures we would have been uh, this extinct like the dinosaurs or any other species in the world so as a human nature a human beings we are very good at adapting and that's the main root cause again buddha use the term that uh, uh, so buddha use that whichever situation we are in we learn to adapt and adjust in that uh, it's called tatra tatra binantini sayati thang so this was spoken by the buddha in his first discourse when he gave the first discourse to the five disciples after he was enlightened and he mentioned the main root cause of all the sufferings that we are experiencing is simply because we normally adapt to the new uh, or wherever we are in uh, and we take it in and we entertain with that and we engage with it and make it as a second nature and with that, that simply because we are fulfilling our desire. We are fulfilling our wish. So I, we can stay in that community or in that situation harmoniously. And with that, that is giving you benefit to live by. So that is the, the main root cause of why we desire to be, why we desire not to be, and why we desire these so-called the tanha so the the desire that we have desire to be desire not to be or desire wanting to be and that's simply based on the situation that we are in and we engage and we want to get best out of it and now this corona or the covid 19 is affecting all of us and we are entering into this new norm and as we are entering into no new norms when it was introduced end of the march and that was a very very serious time and everyone was frustrated everyone had a fear everyone was uncertain unsure what's going to be how long it's going to be lasting and so and so and the first week, as soon as the government introduced the lockdown, almost everyone followed the guidelines. And then the whole city, whole the country was just stopped. But after a one week later, we gradually adapt to that new system, new ways of living. And then gradually now it's been over a month. After this over a month, we have this norm or we have adapted psychologically and physically in this new system simply to satisfy our desire satisfy and also to be happy in this situation and if we are not mindful of that situation or that how we are adapting in this new system and if we are in uh, more into the wanting and then not happening this and not happening and that and engaging with that a lot uh, rather than comparing or thinking of in, in a holistic way 
then that creates significant disruption in our mind. I do understand there are plenty or significant number of people lost their job. And I do understand that there are significant number of people are facing really difficult time. Mortgage to pay, rent to pay, uh, and car to pay, and electricity, rent, and so and so. There's, there are plenty of bills to pay. And with that, there are other sorts of uh, ways thinking of how can I get out of it and how can I solve the problem like that and when we look at that the people who has got a lot they have got more suffer people those who have got less they have less suffer in this situation those who have got less they only think of how, oh, how can I get food and eat where can I get the shelter but whereas in a developed country in particular thinking of how can I pay for the mortgage how can I pay for the cars how can I pay for the insurance how can I pay for so and so it's not concentrating on the food so who has got a lot desire he has got more suffering one has got less desire or less he has got or she has got a less problem but having said that doesn't matter which which way you are facing in this pandemic all what you need is the mindfulness being mindful what you make a decision the way you speak the way you act and the way you think and that will help to define and to help you and most importantly patient patiently with your wisdom with mindfully you are working on that and making a decisions not on the basis of that this is your right but on the basis that what's going on and do not be selfish be kind and understanding of one another helping one another and with that we will grow as a human nature as a human we are social beings never ever think that you are the one and the rest are none because of them we are and there is a saying that because of the another person we are a human or I am so that's what what we need to develop in this uh, crisis in this pandemic time is the wisdom part and developing the mindfulness and only then we can deal with that and this is what exactly the message of the Buddha that rather than entertaining into and then trying to get what uh, trying to get what I'm going to have and what I'm not going to have but thinking reasonably rationally and understanding the desire that what we have and gradually understanding the whole nature so I offer this as a reflection and I believe I do not offend you or offend you if I if uh, this offends you then I'm sorry okay I'm just talking uh, on the basis the teaching says that we are very good at adapting and adopting in a different situation and that simply because of our desire to be and not to be or to have and not to uh, not to have it in the on the basis of that we create more uh, stories and the plans and things and gradually we uh, engage in, in that and that's how we are drawn into the samsara of birth and a death again and again but the very moment when we realize the situation and how we are adapting into new society and that adaptation is not because we want 
to adjust and um, uh, uh, and then adopt it but also simply just to be mingling or just to be merging into the human human humanity and then uh, there will be a mutual understanding uh, it's like a water bending together uh, and that's the teachings of the buddha to lose uh, the identity but blending in into the oneness okay so uh, on the uh, sixth in thailand uh, and in uh, south asia in, in uh, asia celebrating a vaisak celebration uh, and the seventh in Sri Lanka, Nepal, India, celebrating Vesak Purnima or the Vesak Day, celebrating Buddha's birth, his enlightenment, and his passing away day. We're also celebrating here at the center on the sixth uh, at two o'clock. We will start online, and uh, we are also having on the tenth uh, another small ceremony uh, to celebrate the Vesak as well. So you're most welcome to join. And meantime, on the Vesak day, uh, there are a number of uh, members and uh, supporters are also offering uh, some financial support to the center. Also, thank you very much. Uh, and may those offerings bring you happy and uh, uh, blessings. Uh, and on that day, although you cannot go to the temples and the viharas, I would encourage you to accept uh, five precepts or if possible eight precepts at least for a day and practice meditation so i end tonight's uh, uh, talk by this and thank you very much for following and listening everyone so thank you everyone for ranjani take Bahadur, and from nepal and mahinda aiba Right, uh, Mahinda Aiba is asking, Vandana Bhante, uh, can you explain about the Pratitya Samapada Dhamma? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I will do it uh, following days. Uh, Jennifer, Karina, David, Suresh, Colin, and Sarala. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you very much. And we'll see you tomorrow for the talk. And meantime, you can uh, continue listening uh, meditate uh, the chanting, evening chanting, and guided meditation, which followed uh, shortly uh, for the chanting. It's a seven uh, a few minutes time. We, we will start the chanting, and then after half an hour chanting, we will have the guided meditation. So you are most welcome to join with us to practice together. So with this, may you be happy, peaceful, and successful, and may the Buddha bless you. And good night. Thank you.